This example asks us to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of square root of the quantity x to the six plus five x cubed minus x cubed. Now the first thing we might want to do here is just plug in infinity for x or just let x run out to infinity. But note that if we do that, we get infinity minus infinity, which is an indeterminate form. We can't say what that is. It certainly isn't necessarily just zero. In fact, it's almost definitely not zero. So be careful with, with that. Every once in a while you see someone who does infinity minus infinity equals zero, which is actually profoundly incorrect. So instead, we need to do a little bit more work here. Now, oftentimes when you have a radical, plus or minus something that's not in a radical, you use what's known as the conjugate trick. And so what I'll do is take the conjugate of this entire term, and what the conjugate means is you take the exact same thing, but you change the sign. So here I'm gonna change this minus x cubed to plus x cubed, and you multiply. So we'll take this whole deal here, multiply by the square root of x to the sixth plus five x cubed, but then we'll write it as plus x cubed. All right, in parentheses. But we can't just go around multiplying by terms like that. We can only multiply by one. So I'm gonna divide by the same thing, square root of x to the sixth plus five x cubed. All right, all plus x cubed, all right? because now we've just multiplied by one and we can multiply by one all day without changing anything. Okay, so what does this give us? All right, so we still have our limit. Limit as x goes to infinity. We foil the top together so that radical times the radical gives us x to the sixth plus five x cubed. Note that the outside and inside terms will always cancel out. That's why the conjugate trick is so great. And then we have negative x cubed times x cubed which is simply minus x to the sixth, all right? All over, what do we have down below? Well, now we have something down here, x to the sixth plus five x cubed, all in the square root, plus x cubed outside of the square root. Well, when look at here, the x to the sixth is cancel out, so that's kind of nice, leaving us with just five x cubed on the top. So next, remember that the key to evaluating these kinds of limits is to divide everything by the highest power in the denominator. That's the highest power of x. Okay, so the highest power in the denominator is x cubed in this case. So here we'll write it as x cubed. Well, what about this x to the sixth? Well, note that it's actually square root of x to the sixth. So here we'll write x cubed as square root of x to the sixth. Note that that is the same thing as x cubed. And down here we have x cubed, or up here in the, in the numerator, we have x cubed as well. We have two different versions then, as you can see, of, of x cubed, x cubed, and square root of x to the sixth, but they are the same at the end of the day. Okay, so this limit becomes the limit as x goes to infinity of, well, we just have five left up top. Down here, we have the square root of one plus five over x cubed inside the radical plus one outside the radical. Well, as that x goes to infinity, this five over x cubed term will go to zero. So this whole thing evaluates to five over one plus one, which is five halves. And that is the final answer. So always keep the conjugate trick close. It's super useful, but you have to know when to use it and you have to know how to use it.